Hiya. Welcome back to the channel. Um, this video, this one is something that I haven't done for a while. And it is a fuel comparison video. Um, and I'm gonna compare what I usually use, which is like V Power Shell or you know, that sort of thing, I octane. Since I've had it remapped, that one's supposed to put in it anyway. So I'm gonna compare that to something which is even higher octane and more power and no ethanol in it, most importantly. And that is aeroplane fuel, have gas, yes. So first, I'm gonna get my baseline figures by putting some Shell V power in it, like I normally do. And I got the baseline figures. I'm gonna try and do a rough MPG, it won't be that accurate because I'll be doing tests more of is it any faster or does it drive any different? I'm gonna be more focused on them sort of tests than MPG, but I will take the MPGs as well. Uh, and this, you know, the tests will be roughly the same for each amount of fuel that I put in, so maybe there will be some sort of accuracy in it, but that isn't what I'm trying to test. So I'm gonna put a couple of gallons of Shell Vipo in it to get me baseline results, and then we'll see. We'll see how it is and see if there's any difference. I mean, it might end up taking off, it might end up flying around, it might be right, right sick, so we'll see. So there is two gallon of V power in. So a 9.08 litres of V power into the Chitron, um, which gives us that much fuel. Um, and it cost that much money. Now, the Av gas was more expensive. Um, it was for the same amount, 23 quid or thereabouts. So it is dear, I think it's £2.60 a litre or something. So we'll see if it's any better and if it is any better is it that much better um right so i'm gonna go and do some tests and see how this performs and, and see what mpg i get roughly i think i'll start with the north 60. um standard before this car became a fire breathing monster with all the modifications and um, the standard time for north 60 on these cars is i believe 13 and a half 13.3 seconds um, but also, the top speed is supposed to be 98 miles an hour. And I believe that they go faster than that, to be honest with you. Geared pretty long, these shitters. So let's go and see what a Nord 60 is. Which was an amount of seconds. I couldn't tell you exactly what because I haven't watched the footage back yet. But I reckon nine and a bit. Just over nine seconds. Maybe nine and a half. I don't know. But it was that fast. Um, so. Let's have another go and see if we can do any better. seconds seems to be quite a consistent not to 60 for the v power what i'm also going to do is i'm going to compare that obviously i want to do a side by side at the end of the video comparing before and afters um, but also i don't just want to compare the north 60 i also want to compare the drivability where possible now this is going to be highly accurate just like the north 60 was um, it's, it's going to be pretty much my opinion on it for most of it but my opinion is fat, so that's fine. Um, no, what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and get a comparison. So now say fourth gear, right? I've got 20 mile an hour in fourth gear, right? Uh, which is ticking over. And then I'll put my foot down. And then we'll see what the difference is. So that's a couple of stunning visuals for comparison. And right on cue, fuel light has, uh, has come on, which, as I said, I usually get about 80 miles. So that is about 80 miles. So I reset that shitter and refill the shitter with two gallons of this, which is 
that there. I don't know if it shows up too well, but it's like a faint pale baby blue pit right, sort of colour. And that is Avgas, which is basically just petrol. Um, it's like old school petrol, it's 100 octane, so power and that. And um, it's it's got lead in it, and it tastes awful, as I've just found out. It doesn't, it tastes like, it leaves an oily residue, it seems to. But I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so I need to put that back into there because, like I said, I've got exactly two gallon in there. So I need to get all what I can into the car. I found a suitable vehicle to put it into. And these fuel caps are a pain in the arse, actually. Sorry, for gas caps. Pain in the arse. Right, so now I need to put that into here. As you can see, it's it's now ready. It's ready to go. So you need to insert this nice and lovingly into here and get all of it in. And one thing that I didn't actually um, say, which is probably the most important thing about why why this stuff's better, well, I don't know, it might be better. No ethanol in it. No ethanol in it at all. So just keep that going and then give it a bit of a shake. We're gonna shake, shake, shake our sillies out and shake. And I can put that shit back on there. And there we have our two gallon into the car, ready to do a very scientific testing. Um, saying that I do know, you know, I'm probably gonna get this pointed out like I have in the past, that there is some fuel still in the tank, and really to be as accurate as possible. I probably should run the car fully out and you know flush it through with a couple of doses. Um, there's probably about three liters left in the tank or something like that. So it's it is going to make kind of little effect, but I think overall we should be able to tell if there's any difference or if it's effective. So, well, let's go and do the test. So far, so good. Not broken down yet, which is a positive. Um, feels nice and responsive and um, the only thing is I've not gathered the courage to get them to uh, press the go pedal all the way to the bottom yet to, uh, to compare like full bore big licks mode but we'll come to that same as before disappointedly i didn't take off didn't fly so that was the same i was still on the ground um, but speed wise not giving it big licks feels about the same um, however it does feel easier to drive and slightly more willing i thought there might be a bit of a difference like when i tested the the e10 versus v power there was a massive difference or to me there was and there seemed to be and everything sort of correlated to that um, and I thought that this might be the same sort of difference or a similar sort of difference because the ethanol content is still 5% in the V power and it's none in the Avgas. So I thought that there might be a bit of a, well, a difference there. But I can't really feel anything when putting your foot down or, you know, giving it big licks. But like I said, the car does feel a bit easier to drive. So I'm going to test the uh, 40 mile, uh, sorry, fourth gear 20 mile an hour job it now. So I'll see. See if that's any different. And there doesn't seem to be any sort of massively noticeable difference there either. But, like I said, I haven't put the footage or compared any of the footage yet. So I could be way off like I was with the original North 60 time. Um, and it might be massively faster, it could just be me. But at the moment, that didn't feel much different. But what does feel different, and this definitely does feel different, is 
that when I am driving normally, for instance, right, say now I'm in third, I'm th third gear and doing tiny throttle openings, that does feel, you know, it feels really easy to drive. So if nothing else, that, I'm sure that does feel like I'm only touching the throttle a tiny bit though. Yes. So that, MPG wise, um, is about the same. Which brings us right back to the V Power Shop. So, in conclusion, is the car any different on Avgas, which is basically five star leaded petrol, I think, um, to on normal or high octane, you know, premium, best quality Shell V Powers? And the answer is, is slightly, it's nothing like the difference between E10 and you know, V-Power that I've done in the past. It's not It's not as much as that. But there is a little bit of difference there. Main things, as usual, when I when I do these, I find is responsiveness is something that you notice more than anything else. Um, in the North 60s, it is a little bit quicker. Not a massive amount, but it is It is there. Um, and then it boils down to, is it worth it? Right, the, the negatives of running the Avgas is, it can ferrule up and carbon up things a bit more. Um, and it's got lead in it. And I was behind this car, a, a, well, about a week ago, um, and I was riding a bike behind it, and it smelt like the 1990s, it was brilliant. Um, so that's a positive. But negative, main negative, is, is you can't just get it from anywhere, so it's a bit of an asshole to get, and it's fucking dear. I mean, like, £2.60 a litre or something. So it is, it is pretty dear, and it's not really worth it. Even if I could get it from a petrol station, that I was driving past. I'd probably only save it for special occasions, you know. Um, you know, like if I go into a wedding, I might put it in, or it's, you know, something like that. I'm mean, birthday, maybe, which is coming up. Anyway, so that concludes this episode. That is it for this week. Um, I've just tipped over 4,000 subscribers as I'm filming this. Just, just in filming this video, but within, like, what, what, last night. Um, so anyway, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all the usual kind of bollocks, and I will see you next time. Peace out.